so here we are um, getting ready to look at the results now. So I've clicked the results tab and that's loaded uh, the results. It's telling me it's by action loading after uni action yielding. When I look at the results, I realize now that I have two steps. So you can see here, step one has 10 increments and step two has 100 increments like we stored in the analysis results. So I can start at step one increment number zero and that's where everything begins. Um, the displaced shape and the uh, undeformed shape are going to be the same. As um, we look at the increments, that's the first increment, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. So at the end of the tenth increment, you have applied a displacement of, we can look at a contour plot that tells me that I've applied a displacement in the x direction. of 0 .0, 0 0.6 inches, as you can see. I have displaced it 0 0.6 inches. And if I look at the strain, E, E11 will be 0 0.005. As I told you before, we've applied half the 1% uh, strain in the first step, and we've applied it uniaxially only in the x direction. Of course, plasticity has occurred, and we can confirm that by looking at PE11. That's 3.276 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3. So in the first step, we took that same material. We know it's an elastic, perfectly plastic material, and we stretched it in the x direction so that it has yielded. And then in the second step, we started applying displacements in both directions. So let me pull back the displacements. U, <coughs> 2. And here I have several increments, so I'm going to look at first the last increment. And now I'm seeing that U2 is 1.8 inches in the vertical direction and U1 is 1.2 inches. So this is the same displaced state. Total displacement is the same as the biaxial proportional loading that we saw earlier, where we had just stretched together to 1.2 and 1.8. But the path that we've taken is a little bit different. And so in the second step, this material has been completely in the yielded state. That was the idea. In the first step, we caused yielding to occur. And then in the second step, we subjected it to biaxial loading after uniaxial. So we were uh, subjecting or forcing behavior in the plastic state. And why are we doing this? Because I want to see whether that data point is moving on the von Mises ellipse or not. And the best way to do that would be to look at the plot of the principal stresses. Now, this is a biaxially loaded planar problem. So S11 and S22 are equal to the principal stresses SP1 and SP2. But I can post-process the results and I can plot SP1 versus SP2 and show you whether the data point is moving on the ellipse or not. So let's do that. Let's do that. Let's, we, we wanted to investigate whether the, stress states are moving on the von Mises ellipse or not. So what we'll do is instead of saving, and we'll look at everything, just uh, one, one thing at a time, we're gonna go to S and we're gonna pull out S11 and S22. And we'll pull them out from one particular element. Let's pick this element. And uh, we'll save it. Yeah, the results have been saved. And I'll say XY data create, operate on XY data. Okay, see in the previous data sets are here, now I can't tell what's what. 